Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. I have two Tiz takes this week. Um, dum, dum, dum. So Joe Rogan has been in the media this past uh, couple of weeks. Uh, he's been apologizing a lot. And uh, the most recent one is for like his uh, use of the, the N-words and stuff like this. And they put together like this compilation that popped out on YouTube. That's like all of the time he said the N-word in the course of his podcast or whatever. Now, this Joe Rogan outrage then, then pushed me past my fucking limit. Um, People spazzing off of clips from the past 12 years or so without any context is just stupid to me, first off. Like, I could see if they play, if they play like the episodes in the full context of that whole conversation, but just playing just the one sentence where he's saying the end, like, nigga, like, that don't really yeah. show exactly why he said it. And I ain't one of them people that feel like, well, if we, gonna, if we can't, like, at the end of the day, man, I tell, I'm going to get to that. Let me not even go there. Mm-hmm. But first of all, stop spazzing off of old shit without context. Second of all, people are canceling this man, but they were never listening or following this man in the first place. Like, they won't even watching this nigga shit. How you gonna cancel him and you ain't like him in the first place? Like, I, you wouldn't have known about mm-hmm. him if the news won't talk about him saying this N-word shit. Like, you would have never even cared. It, it don't go across your radar. So why are you talking about you? Can, like all these fake ass. Oh, so all right, nigga, you didn't give a fuck last week. So stop. Just don't give a fuck this week. Like, fuck out of here with this fake outrage shit, man. This new, this new witch hunt. Let me find all the fucked up shit you did that you done grown from in your past that you might not have done in five to ten years, but because you did it way back then. Let me use that against you now. Like, that shit corny, man. And it, 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 it don't let people grow. Like, we got to give people room to grow. Like, there's nobody I know that's above the age of 30 that's, like, doing this or thinking the same way that they was in their 20s. Like, it, you grow. Like, the shit you thought was funny back then may not be as funny now because you done had different life changes that may change it. You may have had a kid. You may have a wife now. You may have gone through some trauma or some new life experience. You may have bought a house. Like, shit is going to shift in your mind. So, like, to think that we didn't all, and I mean all young people, say some fucked up shit, whether it was just to our friend groups or whether it was on a public platform, we didn't all say it done some fucked up shit when we was young just off the fact that we was young and didn't know no better. And then as you grew and learned and realized the impact you had in the world, you begin to do better. Like, we can't keep doing that shit, man. Like, if, if you don't pay attention, tears take one. If you don't pay attention to, to someone or to something, or if you yourself do the same shit you have said at, stop saying you canceling them or acting outraged. You didn't care yesterday, so keep that same fucking energy. And that leads me to my second tears take on the same topic. Why? And it was part of that last tears take. Why do we keep being outraged at the same behaviors that we display toward other races? See, a lot of black people that will call a white person a cracker or Asian a chink in traffic or will call uh, 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 a person of Arab descent, they'll call them a a sand nigga or Arab or whatever else other than their actual ethnicity. But then when somebody else do it, we keep being outraged. Matter of fact, Fuck the fact that we mad at them about saying shit that we say about other races. We say that shit about each other. We call each other nigga. And I ain't about to get caught up in the semantics. Mm-hmm. Of, we use it as a Greek. Man, look. Words got meanings, folks. If we gonna keep using it as a whatever, we can't keep being outraged. We also rob, steal, beat, and kill our own people daily. We act a hot ass mess in public as a race. We coddle our own people when they do stupid shit and then say, well, you know, we don't, don't talk about another black man or black woman. But then we want all this respect from the outside world. Until we respect ourselves, we're going to keep on receiving disrespect. 
So I'm done with getting upset. Tears take number two. I'm done with getting upset at other races for saying nigger or any other slur until we stop calling each other, treating each other, and acting like niggas. And I'm done. And the floor is y'all. I am complete. Um, I was going to say, the people that, listen, that look at Joe Rogan is not the people who is going to cancel him. And that's the reason why he's not going to get canceled. He's just not. Hmm. He's just not. Yeah. The, the people right that uh, that's actually, yeah, the people that's actually offended or whatever, you won't listen to them anyway or whatever. You just hear these tad bits. And then when the person, the person you get like, uh, get a certain amount of fame or whatever, and if somebody gets into a disagreement, because this didn't even start on the racism shit. It, it started off with Neil Young or whatever being a vaccine advocate saying that I'm not going to have my music on the same platform as racing when NDRE got into it and started putting stuff out or whatever. Me, I've been knowing about Joe Rogan. There's a lot of things I disagree with with Joe Rogan. There's some things I do agree with with Joe Rogan when he has these conversations. And his whole thing about his show is getting people that he ne don't necessarily agree with or disagree with on the show to see why I, we disagree or mm -hmm. have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole gist of his show. So in a, in a platform like that, it's bound to be some Quentin Tarantino-esque words thrown about right yeah, yeah I, I, i'm i'm <clears throat> i'm not i'm not i'm never going to be surprised for a white man being a white man i'm never <laughs> going to be surprised at a human at a, a human <laughs> being a human and doing human shit i'm just never going to be surprised at that or whatever oh a well, well, white man said nigga oh hey guess where i'm from virginia <laughs> Guess where I live? Probably down down the street from somebody that got a Confederate flag that's calling niggas niggas as they walk past his house. Not out loud, probably, but he's probably saying it in his house. That happens. I'm not gonna be surprised about that. What I'm more, I don't I don't want a whole campaign so we can get one person to stop saying nigga. Right. Y'all gonna make get a whole movement and millions of people on Twitter or whatever platform to say to get this one person to stop saying nigga. No, no, no. I don't even care if y'all say nigga. I don't want y'all to stop treating us as niggas. I'm a human being. There you go. <laughs> whatever. So uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go on a rage campaign because he said. He said, "Nigga, I just, I'll go. Let's go on a rage campaign against these like big ass politicians and get Democrats that pander to us on Fuck Black that. History Month with dashiki cloths, <laughs> with, with kente cloths and shit, okay. so we can get votes so they can do absolutely nothing." Uh huh. Right. I mean, nothing. matter of fact. Matter of fact, it's, it's the people that's canceling Joe Rogan right now that's pissing me off because they're not doing nothing. It's, it's like right. the same thing as Dave right. Chappelle said. Right. They're oh, just complaining. I outraged to look cool for clicks and views, but you're not actually outraged. Like, <clears throat> just following a trend of other people. Like, it may have been somebody who was actually outraged by it. Cool. Mm -hmm. Most of y'all. India Ari's outraged. Most of y'all don't cool. care about Joe Rogan. You didn't care about him last week. You're not gonna care about him next week. Like nothing in your, you've done nothing different in your life other than send a tweet or Instagram post or make a TikTok. So let that shit go. I still don't understand. I still don't understand how Joe Rogan is as big as he is. Like one, he he's a comedian, but to me, he's not that funny as a comedian. Really dry. He is huh? a comedian. 
So he has that lane. Mm-hmm. Also, really lane. into the fight game. So he has a lane right. to that. Then he's also into conspiracy theories. So he has that lane. Like he's it because his show is built off of having conversations with random people and just kind of allowing them to express their views and he challenge them and they go back and forth. But it's really just about like learning and trying to grow. Mm-hmm. He says he has so many conversations mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. Different topics. Over years. The reason he has mm-hmm. millions of viewers is because really hundreds of millions of people have at some point tuned in because he was talking to somebody that resonated with them. So when he bring on the doctors, he gonna get a bunch of medical people coming over to watch. Mm. When he get when he does uh politics, he gonna get a bunch of people that's into politics to come over. You know what I mean? Like he he just has such a vast you alien. Yeah, you got you got them enthusiasts over there. Exactly. He just got so many places he can go. Whereas a lot of mm-hmm. other ones are kind of like stuck into one perspective he don't have it's, one it's literally aspect. anything goes so anybody that watches even if you don't necessarily care about the person that's on there they'll get to like he'll have somebody on there that's from the medical place but they'll get to talking about the intricacies of like how they like steak cook and it's such a regular conversation that at some point during that conversation some gonna resonate with you because it's just it, it, they, they regular so conversation at some point, they're gonna cover something that resonates you, whether it's re- relationships or politics or like face said, the alien shit, like all of that shit gets covered with almost every guest. So it's like so many different angles. I'll put it like this, man. Niggas have, excuse me, people have nothing better to do than look for shit to cancel. But if y'all mm-hmm. cancel everything y'all trying to cancel, y'all have nothing else to entertain you. It's the shit that entertains you that you want to cancel just to have something to say. It's cool to have your opinion, but everyone has one, and yours is no no more painted or no more important than the next person. You can't cancel somebody just because your opinion is offended. Oh, well, I'm, I guarantee you these people who are so easily offended by everything that want to be canceled, they really don't have too many real-life conversations. Because they did, they'll be offended a lot more. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of trying to drive content. Like, this dude is getting so big. Let me poke the bear or try to cancel this person so I can just get the content of seeing how they respond. So now I have more shit to watch and fuel my, like, that troll mm-hmm. truck center of my brain that's like, I need drama. Where's the controversy? Oh, ain't no controversy. Let me go back and find something then. Let me sit. Like, I really want to make sure some on the internet now that they'll just sit there and like, okay, hmm, I like watching this person. Let me find out how much fucked up shit they done did in the past so I can bring that up. Mm-hmm. The fake outrage now mm-hmm. we have a whole new cycle of shit for me to watch. Hmm. Like, because there's, there's no other reason for you to go back in somebody's deep past to find the fucked up shit. Like, if they're doing something fucked up now, hold them to it. But everybody done done something fucked up. No matter what, how, how little you consider it to be fucked up or how great, everybody done lied, cheated, stole, then fucked around on their mate, or then cursed out somebody that they shouldn't have, or to call somebody something that they shouldn't have. And it's just a matter of whether or not it was a camera pointed at you when you did it. But you've done it. So mm-hmm. if you're not doing it now, does that make you a bad person now? Like, because you call somebody some fucked up shit in fifth grade, does that make you a horrible <clears throat> adult? Like, I don't think so. I think that, like, everybody doesn't grow, but everybody can grow. And we got to allow people that space. Like, come on, man. Celebrate the growth, man. Celebrate the growth, not the negativity of the past. Absolutely. Be a person for what they're trying to become, not, a, not for what they were. I'm trying to tell you. And, um, yeah, man, that's been my tears takes for the night, man. Yeah. I appreciate y'all letting me go off on that for a minute and also just sharing y'all, uh, y'all perspectives on it, man. And uh, I like the way Faye said, you know, focus on the growth. Because uh, if you've noticed, the partners are continuing to grow. 
for continuing to continue to uh get better and work on the video production and all of that for y'all. So uh mm-hmm. support your boys, man. And face tell them one of the best ways that they can support us. You know, man, you can go to good old R Trade Clothing dot com and get your first ACA3 merchandise and also your partner's podcast merchandise, man. Always mm-hmm. refreshed up for every season of the year. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. Got your hoodies, got your short sleeve long so you got your beach towels, got your polos. We got a lot of different stuff there. Um, you will see a increased social media presence from us sooner than later. But if you want to see the clothes, you want to purchase the clothes, you want to celebrate with us, you want to support us, you want to support the different brands that we do create, once again, go to rtradeclothing.com. That's A-R-T-R-E clothing.com. Check us out, man. Big facts, big facts. And continue to support in all of the other ways as well. Um, you can continue to financially support through the Cash App. That's dollar sign Podnatiz1. That's P-O-D-N-A-T-I-Z-1. Or you can also support on buymeacoffee.com and you can donate for as little as $1 or become a monthly member for $4.99, which gives you access to a bunch of exclusive perks. You can also support financially by going to anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partners. And you can go ahead and support our podcast by becoming a monthly supporter for $4.99 and just, you know, continuing to help us to grow all of the proceeds that you get put into us. We literally put right back into the podcast, whether it be pay, paying hosting fees, paying uh for store stuff, paying for the actual uh, new equipment and new ways that we're trying to improve the sound and visual qualities. Like everything you donate and, and support with does go back into the company. So please continue to support. And if you cannot support financially, you can always support by easily. If you're on YouTube, like, share, subscribe, real easy. Like, share with people that you think may, it may resonate with as well. And then make sure that you are subscribed and they're subscribed as well so y'all can stay tuned in to all of the latest pod squad news and events. Also, go ahead, make sure that you are checked in. Log in to thepartners.com. About to update it this week, so you'll see a bunch of new graphics, a bunch of new content on there. You'll see all of the updated links. You'll see new store picks so that y'all can see the updated AC83 and Partners gear. You'll see it all, so be looking out for that. And Pat. If they want to get in touch with us, like they want to talk to us, they want to interact with us, they want to kind of pick our brain, they want to share their thoughts and opinions, or they want to hear ours and just kind of keep up with us on a day-to-day basis. How can they do that? At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. And that is our Twitter. That is our Instagram. That is our TikTok. Uh, I believe it's also our Twitch. And Tiz Face Pack, all the partners on Facebook. Indeed. And uh, yep, just hit us up there with any ideas. If you got any topics y'all want us to s- discuss, any sh- uh, videos you want us to react to, just go ahead there. Um, and there's always the email of T H E P O D N A S podcast P O D C A S T at gmail.com. Yep. Indeed, indeed. And uh, speaking of users, um, <laughs> Speaking of viewers and pod squad members reaching out and giving us show ideas, uh, I definitely got you last call. One of the OG members of the pod squad, one of the the members of the board of the pod squad, um, I got you. Um, I'm definitely going to have a topic next week on the Black Seminoles of Florida um, to kind of touch on some Black history stuff there. So I got you, King. But yeah, man. Interesting. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, he definitely put me up on that. I hadn't really even... Like, I don't think I'd ever even really heard of that. So uh, it's going to be dope to kind of do the research over the next week and uh, unveil that and discuss that. I've, I've heard, I said that before. Oh, dope. So you'll know some. You, you may be able to uh, add in to some of what I research and kind of give me even more perspective. So- I've-